Hey, hey, welcome back. It's uh, we're just breezing right through. An hour and a half is gone, and uh, I'm going to be sad, but uh, only 22 more minutes left of real good television, and I don't want to waste any more of your time without letting you see my partner, who's right here, uh, Frank Morano, joins me again. And, uh, you know, we get into all corners of the universe, all thoughts. We have artists, we have magicians, we have comics, we have humorists, we have all sizes, sexes, shapes, things. Um, and we want to bring you a thoughtful perspective of many things. And uh, today joining us is Shireen Kadozi. She's the director of Muslim Matters at uh, America Matters and a writer for The Federalist. And uh, Shireen, uh, thank you for joining us. She joins us via Skype. Welcome to Liquid Lunch. Thank you. I, I want to just add that I really enjoyed serving with America Matters, but I'm with Clarion Project now as our national correspondent and director of PVE training for their education initiatives. That's uh, that's on me, Shireen. Apologies. I uh, <laughs> I used an old intro uh, for you when I wrote it out for uh, for John. Um, so tell us about this town hall that uh, that that you guys did in Ilhan Omar's district. Certainly, I don't think there's a congresswoman in America uh, that has gotten more attention and a good portion of it negative. Uh, then Ilhan Omar, what did you guys do and why? Well, we took the conversation straight to her district. There are uh, so many issues that she's skirting around, and she calls very, very critical questions that impact our community and that impact Americans as appalling questions. And in reform, we believe that no question is off limits. So we took all those questions straight to her district and then an open conversation on, on a number of issues that really covered the entire spectrum of uh, what it means to be Muslim and what it means to be American in the 21st century and how we can reconcile those values with American values. Can someone um, at any of these things, can anyone get her on the record, especially with something as big as 9-11, um, acknowledging that it wasn't some people who did some things on 9-11, but it was, you know, Muslim, Islamic, radical, terrorist. Did she even recognize that? Well, one of the issues that we covered in the town hall, this was a question that came from the audience, is how do we know which Muslims to trust and which Muslims to be skeptical skeptical of? And really, we have to look at the body of work. And so my colleagues, Dr. Zudi Jasser and I, Asra Nomani, and, and myself and others, we have 15 years minimum of work to show for what we've done. And we've been consistent. With Elon Omar, that narrative keeps skipping. And if this was a one-off thing, if she said this, somebody did something as a one-off statement in, in light of many positive uh, you know, statements that reflect our values, that wouldn't be as big of a deal. But this comes on the heels of really hateful, Jew-hateful, um, anti-Semitic slurs. It comes on the heels of really deflecting questions on FGM. And so when and we have this entire new video she came up with today that was this really nice, well-put-together propaganda piece about how this fictitious story about what happened to her 9-11, and it's not really an authentic narrative as if you can watch the video for yourself and you can judge for yourself. So when she says somebody did something, it's not just that she said that. But it's the entire scope of her work and her attitude and her demeanor and her behavior towards other Muslim American leaders that really calls this statement into question. Well, uh, it's good to see there are people out there trying to help the rest of us understand, like, how do we know? And no one wants to be uh, stereotype people like that's a Muslim and they're bad. Um, but, uh, you know, how, how do you know? It's hard. It, you know, even around 9-11, some of the alleged terrorists were living right among Americans in Hoboken and Jersey City. Uh, thank God you're out there doing some work and, and pointing out who the bad guys so, are. So, Shireen, I know you've studied this subject uh, at uh, great depth. Uh, why do Muslims, or why does anyone, if we want to extend the conversation to mass shooters, why do people become radicalized to the point where they're either going to do something like carry out a jihadist attack or uh, they're going to shoot up a school? How and why do people become radicalized? Right, so Clarence has a preventing violent extremism training program, and we really look at this question. We look at the broad spectrum of ideological radicalization from Islamist terror to neo Nazis to social militarization to school shootings. And what it comes down to is we all understand how the, the gang frameworks worked in the 80s and 90s, and the same sort of method is applied towards these ideological groups at this point. So, they, what recruiters do, what recruiters for these groups do, is they look for vulnerabilities in people, people who are going through sort of what we call push and pull 
factors in their lives or ways of experience that are that are really causing a lot of conflict in their identity and their belonging, and they exploit those. So when we look at a group like ISIS, for example, ISIS, as much as it does borrow a lot of its uh, violent verses from the Quran, a lot of it, the, the, the rhetoric and the behavior is, is symptomatic of the problematic legacy that Islam has left behind. It also does a lot of what gang recruitment does, and that is it causes um, people who are being indoctrinated to go through hoops and pledge allegiance to just ISIS leaders and forfeit their ability to read the Quran for themselves, which is actually anti-Islamic. So when we look at something like mass shootings, jihadi campaigns, we're looking at people who have really been exploited, people who had difficult lives, difficult, difficult experiences, and then there was some sort of crack in their in, in their timeline that made them really vulnerable to being exploited by people who are smart enough to know how to exploit people using different ideological tactics. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. Well, uh, thank you for your work. Uh, with Muslim Matters, America Matters, and uh, Shireen Kadozi. And, and the Clarion the Project. The Clarion Project. Yeah. Um, please join us again on Liquid Lunch. Anytime you're in North New York, please join us here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back right after this with time out. We're going to take a time out from all the madness, the craziness, the politics, the religion, and all that great stuff. We want to talk some sports. When it's time out with Nico Romano, you're watching Liquid Lunch. We'll be back right after this.